Hello students, I'm your Nandini ma'am. Today, I'm going to read chapter 5, Morphology of Flowering Plants of class 11, Biology from the book NCRT. So let's get started. The wide range in the structure of higher plants will never fail to fascinate us. Even though the angiosperms show such a large diversity in external structure or morphology, they are all characterized by presence of roots, stems, leaves, flowers, and fruits. In chapters 2nd and 3rd, we talked about classification of plants based on morphological and other characteristics. For any successful attempt at classification and at understanding any higher plant, or for that matter, any living organism, we need to know standard technical terms and standard definitions. We also need to know about the possible variations in different parts found as adaptations of the plants to their environment. For example, adaptations to various habitats for protection, climbing, storage, etc. If you pull out any weed, you will see that all of them have roots, stems and leaves. They may be bearing flowers and fruits. The underground part of the flowering plant is the root system, while the portion above the ground forms the shoot system. The root. In majority of the dicotyledonous plants, the direct elongation of the radical leads to the formation of primary root, which grows inside the soil. It bears lateral roots of several orders that are referred to as secondary, tertiary, etc. roots. The primary roots and its branches constitute the tap root system as seen in the mustard plant. In monocotyledonous plants, the primary root is short-lived and is replaced by a large number of roots. These roots originate from the base of the stem and constitute the fibrous root system as seen in the wheat plant. In some plants like grass, monastera and the banyan tree, roots arise from parts of the plant other than the radical and are called adventitious roots. The main functions of the root system are absorption of water and minerals from the soil, providing a proper anchorage to the plant parts, storing reserve food material, and synthesis of plant growth regulators. Regions of the root. The root is covered at the apex by a thimble-like structure called the root cap. It protects the tender apex of the root as it makes its way through the soil. A few millimeters above the root cap is the region of meristematic activity. The cells of this region are very small, thin-walled and with dense protoplasm. They re divide repeatedly. The cells proximal to this region undergo rapid elongation and enlargement and are responsible for the growth of the root in length. This region is called the region of elongation. The cells of the elongation zone gradually differentiate and mature. Hence, this zone proximal to region of elongation is called the region of maturation. From this region, some of the epidermal cells form very fine and delicate thread-like structures called root hairs. These root hairs absorb water and minerals from the soil. Modifications of root. Roots in some plants change their shape and structure and become modified to perform functions other than absorption and conduction of water and minerals. They are modified for support, storage of food, and respiration. Tap roots of carrot, turnips, and adventitious roots of sweet potato get swollen and store food. Can you give some more such examples? Have you ever wondered what those hanging structures are that support a banyan tree? These are called crop roots. Similarly, the stems of maize and sugarcane have supporting roots coming out of the lower nodes of the stem. These are called Silt roots. In some plants, such as Rhizophora, growing in swampy areas, many roots come out of the ground and grow vertically upwards. Such roots, called nematophores, help to get oxygen for respiration. The stem. What are the features that distinguish a stem from a root? The stem is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches, leaves, flowers, and fruits. It develops from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. The stem bears nodes and internodes. The region of the stem where leaves are born are called nodes, while internodes are the portions between the two nodes. The stem bears buds which may be terminal or axillary. 
The stem is generally green when young, but later often become woody and dark brown. The main function of the stem is spreading out branches bearing leaves, flowers and fruits. It conducts water, minerals and photosynthesis. Some stems perform the function of storage of food, support, protection and of vegetative propagation. Modifications of stem. The stem may not always be typically like what they are expected to be. They are modified to perform different functions. Underground stems of potato, ginger, turmeric, jimigand, colocasia are modified to store food in them. They also act as organs of perination to tide over conditions unfavorable for growth. Stem tendrils which develop from axillary buds are slender and spirally coiled and help plants to climb such as in gourds, which are cucumber, pumpkins, watermelon and grapevines. Axillary buds of stems may also get modified into woody, straight and pointed thorns. Thorns are found in many plants such as citrus, bougainvillea. They protect plants from browsing animals. Some plants of arid regions modify their stems into flattened or fleshy cylindrical structures. They contain chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis. Underground stems of some plants such as grass and strawberry etc spread to new niches and when older plants die, new plants are formed. In plants like mint and jasmine, a slender lateral branch arises from the base of the main axis and after growing aerially for some time, arch downwards to touch the ground. A lateral branch with short internodes and each node bearing a rosette of leaves and a tuft of roots is found in aquatic plants like Pistia and Econoria. In banana, pineapple and chrysanthemum, the lateral branches originate from the basin and underground portion of the main stem, grow horizontally beneath the soil and then come out obliquely upward giving rise to leafy shoots. The leaf. The leaf is a lateral, generally flattened structure born on the stem. It develops at the node and bears a bud in its axil. The axillary bud later develops into a branch. Leaves originate from shoot apical meristems and are arranged in an acropetal order. They are the most important vegetative organs for photosynthesis. A typical leaf consists of three main parts, leaf base, petiole and lamina. The leaf is attached to the stem by the leaf base and may bear two lateral small leaf-like structures called stipules. In monocotyledons, the leaf base expands into a sheath covering the stem partially or wholly. In some leguminous plants, the leaf base may become swollen, which is known as pulvinous. The petiole help hold the blade to light. Long, thin, flexible petioles allow leaf blades to flutter in leaf in wind, thereby cooling the leaf and bringing fresh air to the leaf surface. The lamina or the leaf blade is the green expanded part of the leaf with veins and veinlets. There is usually a middle prominent vein which is known as the midrib. Veins provide rigidity to the leaf blade and act as channels of transport for water, minerals and food materials. The shape, margin, apex, surface and extension of incision of lamina varies in different leaves. Venation. The arrangement of veins and the veinlets in the lamina of leaf is termed as venation. When the veinlets form a network, the venation is termed as reticulate. When the veins run parallel to each other within a lamina, the venation is termed as parallel. Leaves of dicotyledonous plants generally possess reticulate venation, while parallel venation is the characteristic of most, most uh, monocotyledons. Types of leaves. A leaf is said to be simple when its lamina is entire or when in size, the incisions do not touch the midrib. When the incisions of the lamina reach up to the midrib, breaking it into a number of leaflets, the leaf is called compound. A bud is present in the axil of petiole in both simple and compound leaves, but not in the axil of leaflets of the compound leaf. The compound leaves may be of two types. In a pinately compound leaf, a number of leaflets are present on a common axis, the rachis, which represents the midrib of the leaf as in leaf. In palmately compound leaves, the leaflets are attached at a common point, that is, at the tip of the petiole, as in silk cotton. Phyllotaxy. Phyllotaxy is the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch. This is usually of three types, alternate, 
opposite and lobed. In alternate type of phyllodyxy, a single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner as in China rose, mustard and sunflower plants. In opposite type, a pair of leaves arise at each node and lie opposite to each other as in calotropis and guava plants. If more than two leaves arise at a node and form a roll, it is called roll as in alstonia. Modifications of leaves. Leaves are often modified to perform functions other than photosynthesis. They are converted into tendrils for climbing as in peas or into spines for defense as in cacti. The fleshy leaves of onion and garlic store food. In some plants such as Australian acacia, the leaves are small and short-lived. The petioles in these plants expand, become green and synthesize food. Leaves of certain insectivorous plants such as bitter plants, Venus flytrap are also modified leaves. The inflorescence. A flower is a modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristem changes to floral meristem. Internodes do not elongate and the axis gets condensed. The apex produces different kinds of floral appendages laterally at successive nodes instead of leaves. When a shoot tip transforms into a flower, it is always solitary. The arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence. Depending on whether the apex gets converted into a flower or it continues to grow, two major types of inflorescence are defined, racemos and cymos. In racemos type of inflorescence, the main axis continues to grow. The flowers are born laterally in an acropetal succession. In cymos type of inflorescence, the main axis terminates in a flower, hence is limited in growth. The flowers are born in a basipetal order. The flower. The flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperms. It is meant for sexual reproduction. A typical flower has four different kinds of rolls arranged successively on the swollen end of the stalk or pedicel called halimus or receptacle. These are calyx, corolla, endrosium, and gynosium. Calyx and corolla are accessory organs, while endrosium and gynosium are reproductive organs. In some flowers, like lily, the calyx and corolla are not distinct and are termed as perianth. When a flower has both endrosium and gynosium, it is bisexual. A flower having either only stamens or only carpels is unisexual. In symmetry, the flower may be actinomorphic or zygomorphic. When a flower can be divided into two equal radial halves in any radial plane passing through the center, it is called to be actinomorphic. For example, mustard, datura, chili, when it can be divided into two similar halves only in one particular vertical plane, it is zygomorphic. For example, pea, gulmohar, bean, casia. A flower is asymmetric if it, it cannot be divided into two similar halves by any vertical plane passing through the center, as in canna. A flower may be trimerous, tetramerous, or pentamerous when the floral appendages are in multiple of three, four, or five, respectively. Flowers with Bracts, reduced leaf found at the base of the pedicel are called bracketate and those without bracts, e-bracketate. Based on the position of calyx, corona and androsium in respect of the ovary on thalamus, the flowers are described as hypogynous, perigynous and epigynous. In the hypogynous flower, the gynosium occupies the highest position while the other parts are situated below it. The ovary in such flowers is said to be superior, for example, mustard, china rose, and brinjal. If gynosium is situated in the center and other parts of the flower are located on the rim of the thalamus, almost at the same level, it is called perigynous. The ovary here is said to be half inferior, for example, plum, rose, peach. In epigynous flowers, the margin of the thalamus grows upward, enclosing the ovary completely. Hence, the ovary is said to be inferior, as in flowers of guava umber and the rare florets of sunflower. Parts of a flower. Each flower normally has four floral rolls, viz. calyx, corolla, androsium, and gynosium. Calyx. The calyx is the outermost roll of the flower and the members are called sepals. Generally, sepals are green, leaf-like and protect the flower in the bud stage. The calyx may be gamosepalous, that is sepalous united, or polysepalous, that means precept. Corolla. Corolla is composed of petals. Petals are usually brightly colored to attract insects for pollination. 
like Kylex, Corolla, may be also free or united. The shape and color of Corolla vary greatly in plants. Corolla may be tubular, bell shaped, funnel shaped, or wheel shaped. Estivation. The mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in a floral bud with respect to the other members of the same role is known as estivation. The main types are valvate, twisted, uh, imbricate, and axillary. When sepals or petals in a roll just touch one another at the margin without overlapping, as in calotropis, it is said to be valvate. If one margin of the appendage overlaps that of the next one, so on, as in china rose, lady's finger, and cotton, it is called twisted. If the margins of the sepals and petals overlap one another, but not in any particular direction, as in casea and gulmohar, the estivation is said imbricate. In pea and bean plants, there are five petals. The largest overlaps the lateral two petals, which in turn overlap the two smallest anterior petals. This type of estivation is known as vexillary or papillionaceous. Androsium. Androsium is composed of stamens. Each stamen, which represents the male reproductive organ, consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther. Each anther is usually bilobed and each lobe has two chambers, the pollen sacs. The pollen grains are produced in pollen sacs. A sterile stamen is called staminode. Stamens of flower may be united with other members such as petals or among themselves. When stamens are attached to the petals, they are epipetalous as in brinjal or epiphyllous when attached to the perianth as in the flowers of lily. The stamens in a flower may either remain free or may be united in various degrees. The stamens may be united into one bunch or one bundle, as in China rose, or two bundles, as in pea, or into more than two bundles, as in citrus. There may be a variation in the length of filaments within a flower, such as salvia and mustard. Gynosium. Gynosium is the female reproductive part of the flower and is made up of one or more carpels. A carpel consists of three parts, namely stigma, style, and ovary. Ovary is the enlarged basal part on which lies the elongated tube, the style. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The stigma is usually at the tip of the style and is the receptive surface for pollen grains. Each ovary bears one or more ovules attached to a flattened cushion-like placenta. When more than one carpel is present, they may be free and are called apocarpus. And they are termed syncarpus when carpels are fused as in mustard and tomato. After fertilization, the ovules develop into seeds and the ovary matures into a fruit. Placentation. The arrangement of ovules within the ovary is known as placentation. The placentation are of different types, namely marginal, exile, parietal, basal, central, and free central. In marginal placentation, the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary and the ovules are born on this ridge, forming two rows as in peak. When the placenta is axial and the ovules are attached to it in a multilocular ovary, the placentation is said to be exile, as in china rose, tomato, and lemon. In parietal placentation, the ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or on the peripheral part. Ovary is one chambered and but it becomes two chambered due to the formation of the false septum, for example, mustard and argimony. When the ovules are born on central axis and septa are absent, as in diaphanous and primrose, the placentation is called free central. In basal placentation, the placenta develops at the base of the ovary and a single ovule is attached to it as in sunflower, marigold. The fruit. The fruit is a characteristic feature of the flowering plants. It is a mature or ripened ovary developed after fertilization. If the fruit is formed without fertilization of the ovary, it is called parthenocarpic fruit. Generally, fruit consists of a wall or pericarp and seeds. The pericarp may be dry or fleshy. When pericarp is thick and fleshy, it is differentiated into the outer epicarp, the middle mesocarp, and the inner endocarp. In mango and coconut, the fruit is known as a drupe. They develop from monotapillary superior ovaries and are one seeded. In mango, the pericarp is well differentiated into an outer thin epicarp, a middle fleshy edible mesocarp, and an inner stony hard endocarp. In coconut, which is also a drupe, the mesocarp is fibrous. The seed. The ovules after fertilization develop into seeds. A seed is made up of a seed port and an embryo. 
the embryo is made up of a radical and embryonal axis and one or two cotyledons. Structure of a dicotyledonous seed. The outermost covering of a seed is the seed coat. The seed coat has two layers, the outer testa and the inner tegment. The hilum is a scar on the seed coat through which developing seeds were attached to the fruit. Above the hilum is a small hole called the micropyle. Within the seed coat is the embryo consisting of an embryonal axle and two cotyledons. The cotyledons of, are often fleshy and full of reserve food materials. At the two ends of the embryonal axis are present the radical and the plumule. In some seeds, such as castor, the endosperm forming as a result of double fertilization is a food storing tissue. In plants such as bean, gram, and pea, the endosperm is not present in mature seeds, and such seeds are called non endospermous. Structure of monocotyledonous seed. Generally, monocotyledons are endospermic, but some, as in orchids, are endospermic, non endospermic. In the seeds of cereal, such as maize, the seed coat is membranous and generally fused with the fruit wall. The endosperm is bulky and stores food. The outer covering of endosperm separates the embryo by a proteinaceous layer called elegeron layer. The embryo is small and situated in a groove at one end of the endosperm. It consists of one large and shield-shaped cotyledon known as scutellum and a short axis with a plumule and a radical. The plumule and radical are enclosed in sheets which are called as polyoptile and polyoriza, respectively. Semi-technical description of a typical flowering plant. Various morphological features are used to describe a flowering plant. The description has to be brief in a simple and scientific language and presented in a proper sequence. The plant is described beginning with its habit which take the characters, roots, stems, and leaves, and then floral characters in fluorescent and flower parts. After describing various parts of a flower or plant, a floral diagram and a floral formula are presented. The floral formula is represented by some symbols. BR stands for bracketate, K stands for calyx, C stands for corolla, P for perianth, A for androsium, G for gynosium. G with a bar underlined, for superior ovary and G with a bar upside for inferior ovary. Then male and female symbols, they are for bisexual plants and uh, a plus with uh, enclosed in a circle for ectonomorphic and percentage for zygomorphic nature of flower. Fusion is indicated by enclosing the figure within bracket and addition by a line drawn above the symbols of the floral parts. A floral diagram provides information about the number of parts of a flower, their arrangement, and the relation they have with one another, position of the mother axis with respect to the flower is represented by a dot on the top of the floral diagram. Calyx, corolla, and androsium and gynosium are drawn in successive roles, calyx being the outermost and the gynosium being the, in the center. Floral formula also shows cohesion and addition within the parts of floral and in between roles. The floral diagram and floral formula in figure 5.20 represents the mustard plant which is family Brachaceae. Description of some important families. Herbaceae. This family was earlier called Papilinoidae, a subfamily of uh, family Leguminosae. It is distributed all over the world. Vegetative characters. Trees, shrubs, herbs, root with root nodules. Stem, erect or climber. Leaves, alternate, pinnately compound or simple. Leaf base, fulvinate, stipulate, venation, reticulate. Floral characters. In fluorescent, race moles, flower, bisexual, zygomorphic, calyx, sepal spine, gamosepalus, imbricate, estivation, corolla, petals five, polypetalus, papillonaceous, consisting of a posterior standard, two lateral wings, two interior ones forming a keel, a vexillary estivation, androsium, ten, diadepalus, enter, diathecus, gynosium, ovary superior, monocapillary, uh, unilocular with many ovules, style single. Fruit, legume, seed, one too many, non endospermic. Floral formula is there in the book. Economic importance many plants belonging to the family are sources of pulses, right? Dye, fibers, fodder, ornamentals, medicines. Solanaceae. It is a large family, commonly called as the potato family. It is widely distributed in tropics, subtropics, and even temperate zones. Vegetative characters. Plants mostly herbs, shrubs, and small trees. 
सेम बकेशियस रियली वुडी या रियल रेक्ट सिलिंड्रिकल ब्रांच सॉलिड और हॉलो हेरी और ग्लैबरस अंडरग्राउंड स्टेम इन पोटैटो लीव्स ऑल्टरनेट सिंपल रेयरली पिनेटली कंपाउंड एक्सटिपुलेट वेनेशन रेटिकुलेट फ्लोरल करेक्टर्स इन फ्लोरसेंस solitary axillary or cymose as in solanum flower bisexual actinomorphic silex sepals 5 united persistent valvate estivation corolla petals 5 united valvate estivation androsium stamens 5 epi petalous gynosium bicapillary syncarpous ovary superior bilocular placenta swollen with many ovules fruits berry or capsule seeds many endospermous economic importance many plants belonging to this family are source of food spice medicine ornamentals or fumigatory lilacea commonly called as the lily family is a characteristic representative of monocotyledonous plant it is distributed worldwide vegetative characters perennial herbs with underground bulbs corms rhizomes leaves mostly basal alternate linear exstipulate with parallel venation Floral characters: inflorescent, solitary, cymose, often umbellate clusters. Flower: bisexual, actinomorphic, perianth. Petal: six, three plus three, often united into tube. Valvate estivation: androsium, stamen six, gynosium, tricapillary, syncarpous, ovary superior, trilocular with many ovules, exile placentation. Fruit: capsule, rarely berry. seed endospermous economic importance many plants belonging to this family are good ornamentals source of medicine vegetables and pollen summary flowering plants exhibit enormous variation in shape size structure mode of nutrition life span habit and habitat they have well developed root and shoot systems root system is either tap root or fibrous generally Dicotyledonous plants have tap roots while monocots have fibrous roots. The roots in some plants get modified for storage of food, mechanical support and respiration. The shoot system is differentiated into stem, leaves, flowers and fruits. The morphological features of stems like the presence of nodes and internodes, multicellular hair and positively phototropic nature help to differentiate the stems from roots. Stems also get modified to perform diverse functions such as storage of food vegetative propagation and protection under different conditions leaf is a lateral outgrowth of stem developed exogenously at the node these are the green in color to perform the function of photosynthesis leaves exhibit marked variations in their shape size margin apex and extent of incisions of leaf blade like other parts of plants the leaves also get modified into other structures such as tendrils spines for climbing and protection respectively The flower is a modified shoot meant for sexual reproduction. The flowers are arranged in different types of inflorescences. They exhibit enormous variation in structure, symmetry, position of ovary in relation to other parts, arrangement of petals, sepals, ovules, etc. After fertilization, the ovary is converted into fruits and ovules into seeds. Seeds either may be monocots or dicots. They vary in shape, size and period of viability. the floral characteristics form the basis of classification and identification of flowering plants this can be illustrated through semi technical descriptions of families hence a flowering plant is described in a definite sequence by using scientific terms the floral features are represented in the summarized form as floral diagrams and floral formula thank you all